Hello and welcome to Adobe Live from the Sofa, I believe number 49 here in the UK, where we are every day from 12 until 1. If you're joining us on YouTube, that's fine, but the discussion all takes place on behance.net slash Adobe Live. So switch to that if you want to actually get involved and ask questions of myself or our guest today, who is the fabulous illustrator, Naomi Wilkinson. Good morning, Naomi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. All the better for sitting here with you. So, uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Let us know who you are, what you do. And yeah, how you do. I'm an illustrator and I live in Bristol in the UK. And yeah, I've been doing it for about, oh, about five years full time. And then I graduated before then. So it's about eight years all in all and about five years full time wow you've generated quite a volume of work and clients for that for that relatively short amount of time that's that's really impressive i think um what we'll do is we'll let uh, tim will be kind enough to uh add the link to your instagram into our chat and that way people can check you out on there and also uh your website which i think is naomiwilkinson.com isn't it is that it's .co.uk .co.uk there's a tv presenter called naomi wilkinson as well who's also from bristol yeah she used to be on milkshake yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. absolutely but anyway there's plenty to see on there and you've got a great list uh, of clients mm-hmm. just before we go into what you're showing us today let's say mm-hmm. hello to uh, some of the people in the chat so we've got quite a few people who are here with us every day so good morning Kirsty. good morning caroline uh valo uh levon uh yasanuri uh paul rye robert here every day i think and uh yeah plenty more so Uh, Don't forget, ask your questions there and pertinent moments, I will put them uh, to Naomi. So Naomi, what are you going to be showing us or sharing with us today? Um, I'm going to do a beachy illustration and it's going to have people who are sitting together and they're close together. They're not keeping a two metre distance. So it's like about kind of, but yeah, yeah. It's like a distant memory of what maybe the future could be like. The olden days. Yeah, yeah. and then I think... (laughs) I probably won't have time to do it within the hour, but then I'm probably going to turn it into a repeat pattern, which I'll put on my Instagram later. Cool. Once That'll it's be finished. fantastic. Right. Well, take it away. The, the set cool. is all yours. Okay. So I'm using Photoshop and I use an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil to do it all. Um, I'm not the most proficient or tech, um, kind of technical person, so you might have to be patient. We but this is how patient. I, yeah, this is how I work. So I've got here, I've got all my files and I've already scanned in the sketch that I'm going to use. So I sketch things by hand and then I scan them in and use them on Photoshop just to, to go over just because I, I kind of like the feel of pencil and doing that stage by hand. Yeah. And then I've already chosen my colours because my colour palettes are the thing that seems to take me the most that you know the longest because I think it's with if your work's quite flat like mine they you know they are the, like, the most important thing kind of visually really yeah. other than the concept is the color palette to be nice and striking and have good contrast and so I've got my color palette here and then I've got my sketch that I've already done quite a scrappy sketchy sketch um, that's the nature of sketches yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so I'm, I might as well get started so Ooh. what I'll do is I'm going to be really good and label all my groups and my layers, which I don't usually do, but I'll be very good for you. You, you don't do. have to. It's not a technical <laughs> practice. So I know. So, well, so you don't see me faffing. So you, you don't want to see me faffing going, which layer was it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to... I was going yeah, to ask go you while while you're just while you're working, just uh, so yeah. carry on working, but I was just mm-hmm. going to say, so how do you go about um the selection of your your palette for a particular piece what's the process involved in that well usually i'll kind of i'll have it a a palette in mind Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'll just start sketching over this sure um usually i'll have a palette in mind and then i'll just i'll spend ages tweaking it 
just once it's actually on Photoshop, I'll um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do a really rough, like really rough kind of Photoshop sketch. Yeah. Where everything's quite blocky and it's not polished at all. And then um, I'll kind of go in and see what it looks like just as blocks. And then I'll refine it from there. But I really, I love um, kind of vintage, like mid-century graphic design. Yeah. And, yep. and and also I think more and more I'm getting inspiration from fine art and painting um, for color palettes, you know. Okay. So trying to kind of have a really broad pool of inspiration, I think it's really is really good to make your color palette really interesting. But then there, I'm always kind of, I love pink. I think pink's such a great, pinks and peaches are such a great base for other colors. So I do have to try sort of try hard not to always use pink because I, I would. And so, and you're using the Apple Pencil here, just right? I yes. think uh, Scott yeah. was just asking, just mm. to confirm. So yeah, I think you're using yeah. Astro Pad, right? For, I am, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, if you're on uh, OS Catalina, if you're on a Macintosh on OS Catalina and you have an iPad Pro, you could use your Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro uh, to do that. This is really for the audience, Naomi. What you're doing is just fine. Yeah. Um, but that's worth investigating. Do you find the overall experience of, of working this way uh, smooth, Naomi? Do you, do you like it? Is it? I do, but I don't know whether maybe it might just be it's become habit. You're right. I, I think that I find it like when I, I was only working on a, a really, really basic Wacom tablet till last mm. year. And when I got the iPad Pro, I found it so hard to get used to it. It took me days to really get used to, even though I knew that it was you know, so much quicker, so much mm. easier. But it just, I'm not really, I'm not really great with the technical side of things. I'm trying yeah. to get better and I'm trying to embrace it, but I do, it doesn't come naturally. Definitely doesn't come naturally. But, um, but, but when I first, when, when I was at uni and I graduated, I, all my, all my work was just gouache paintings that right. I would scan in and, and sort of cut out on Photoshop. Yeah. So. Right, and then I'm going to go with the nice yellowy. Well, I'm 90% certain I, I saw you used a spring-loaded shortcut just then by just holding down the R key to do that rotation, which is... Yeah. See, that's good. That's, yeah, that's yeah. good I, practice, that is. Yeah. yeah. I'm really... I, I find the... In my in my opinion. <laughs> being able to being able to just spin things around on the um, iPad, that, that makes so good. Mm. Because, you know, when you want to draw at it from a certain angle and you can't really get the right angle, and if you were drawing on a bit of paper, you would, might go around... Yeah. So, you know, so it's kind of makes it feel a bit more natural, like you you are drawing on paper. Yeah, of course, because I yeah. mean, our, our strokes take into account our bodies. And so, of mm. course, we don't we're not naturally disposed to draw straight strokes. Yeah. So it's uh, really, it's really lovely. I love that about it because I kind of. I think with with my kind of illustration, I, I do, even though it's quite basic and blocky, mm. I really want to see, you know, see like make it look kind of like I, a person has drawn it mm. you know i think it's i love i love graphic design when it's really clean but sometimes like it's really nice when it's i think if you've been watching the grace and perry um art club that he's been doing since lockdown he was talking about how he loves seeing the artist's handwriting their own handwriting and their own mark making and i think that is actually the really good thing about working this way is that you can see it Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Rufus is having some amusement about the fact that I said it was a Macintosh. Uh, you're quite right. People haven't called it. That for <laughs> but you know, it, it, there's some visual evidence in front of you that I am over 21. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still within my sell by or use by date. <laughs> Not that time. Uh, Jackie's asking how you're connecting yeah. the iPad to the computer. So, Jackie, what uh, Naomi is using. Uh, is a third-party application called AstroPad. Uh, if you're on, uh, uh, however, as I mentioned a moment or two ago, if uh, if you're on a Mac running OS Catalina and you have an iPad Pro, you can actually connect uh, that way to do the same thing uh, effectively. Yeah, but yeah, AstroPad is awesome too. 
So, uh, yeah, Robert Brock is saying the uh, Grace and Perry Art Club is fabulous. It's really good. I'm mm. so sad that it's over. It was such a kind of uplifting programme. Unfortunately, I, I, I missed all of that one. With have the, you? Stuff. Oh, I well, have, yeah. You're the, totally in for a treat, though. You'll be able to catch up on it because he's just, uh, he's so watchable and it's, mm. yeah. He's brilliant. I love him. No, it's good. Right. Have you ever tried Fresco just out of interest because you've got an iPad Pro and you work in this way? Have you ever no, tried it? No. Oh, you should give that a go. Yeah. Have a, have a whirl on that. You might, um, you might find that interesting. Ooh. What is it? Is it? Oh, so Fresco is a drawing app from Adobe. Um, oh. I'm not here to I'm not <laughs> try to mark yeah, it. Yeah, no, out, I'm always it's I'm worth always... mentioning. That, yeah, uh, yeah. So give that a go. It's got yeah, a, definitely a great selection of brushes. It's got some fantastic natural media emulation. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I'm always trying to find. And good it connects brushes. directly to Photoshop. Cool. So you can open your Photoshop documents uh, ah. if you're storing them as cloud documents. You can open them directly onto the iPad there very, very easily. And equally, open those up in Photoshop on your desktop. Cool. So, yeah, this would be, be a good time to do it, like kind of learn new, oh, new yeah. skills, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, right. give it a go. But all the things you're familiar with, layers and all of that stuff. Oh. So, mm. I'm just going to do the poll. Right, this is when I do, sometimes I do, don't do everything hand-drawn. <laughs> it's fun. You're, we're yeah. just interested to see your technique, so yeah. it's good. Um, Kirsty's saying she's used Astro Pad in the past. Yeah. Um, Tunk is saying hello, Adobe family. Hello, Tunk. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, yeah, John O'Reilly's with us. Hello, John. Uh, listening to our natterings while we work, which is good. Ooh. That's one of the great things about this, isn't it? You don't, you know, because you're talking about your work, doing a bit, you can kind of. It's like a podcast. Yeah. You can just listen nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I love podcasts. Mm. What, which ones do you listen to, just out of interest? Oh, I really like, obviously, I love This American Life. Mm hmm And I've been listening to, uh, and like Adam Buxton. Right. Um, and Louis Theroux's new podcast is good. Yeah. And what else do I, I listen to? Because I would listen to them while I work. So... My friends who, you know, if you have a job where you're typing, it's hard to concentrate on podcasts. I think that's a great when thing. When you're drawing. About. Yeah, lovely. it's really lovely. Yeah. Mm. I have to turn it off if I have to write an email. But, um, yeah, so my friends who have kind of office jobs are like, how do you listen to that many podcasts when you've got small children? <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to so many. I've just listened to a great one, actually, about um, called Dissect. It's all wow. about, like, real deep dives into to albums and there's one about Beyonce's album Lemonade and it's very good. Well okay. Yeah. I'm gonna make a note of that. I'll have a look yeah, at that uh, it's later great. on. Yeah, great. I'll have a listen later on. Yeah. There's, uh, I listen to quite a few things out of the US. I listen to stuff from Radio Lab. Uh, yeah, they, oh, I they love, have, love Radio Lab. Mm, they they have a sister title which does a similar thing Ooh. on diving into the production of albums, but I think it's more. I think it's it, it's it's definitely on the on the music production side of things. Yeah. So. And Reply All, do you listen to Reply All? I do. I haven't listened to it in a while. I kind of go, I, I really binge on a podcast and listen to all of mm. them and then kind of, I think, maybe overdo it a bit. Was it Radio Lab that did the Dolly Parton series? Dolly uh, Parton's America? Because that was very good. I'm not entirely sure, but t yeah. Tim, Tim can probably find out for us, Tim. <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't caught that one. The... Um, and what about 99% uh, Invisible? How about that one with Roman Ooh, Mars? Oh, is that the um, architecture one? Yeah. I've yeah, so maybe architecture, yeah. but not always. All yeah, design. Like design. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like Design Matters as well. Yeah. It's quite a good podcast for arty things. But it's quite broad, isn't it? Design Matters. It's not really yeah. just art. But that's good. I mean, more subject matters mm. to draw upon, which is... A good thing. Let's have yeah. a look. So, uh, 
Michelle's asking, do you ever use Illustrator? I don't. No? I, no, I don't. I, I would think, I, I would like to. It's never really a good moment, is there, to kind of get into these things. But I would love to because I think it would give me lots of possibilities. But it's definitely something I'd like to do. I think on my course at university, they were very pro Photoshop, which is interesting. Mm. But um, so I think it was more used then. But I think it's probably quite different now. Did you did you study in Bristol? Did you? I did. Yeah. At UWE or or at Bristol? UWE, yeah. yeah. It's a very very good course, I think. I used to have a, a friend who lectured there, Jeff Jeff Wookie. No, oh, I don't know. It if rings a bell. There. They do have quite a lot like a, a lot of different lecturers. He was amazing. Yeah, when I, was, I was a lecturer at Bath for a for a oh, were you? short amount of time. Yeah, at City of Bath. Yeah. Um, for a, for a few years, and uh, I worked with Jeff there, and he had a project on the go where he was taking the ease out of using tech. Mm. So he built a mouse that uh, that worked via two handles that you wound with your hands. Cool. Like this, and he had to, and he had it geared and stepped down, so he had to go to a tremendous amount of effort just to move one pixel across this <laughs> display. It was hilarious. It was really funny. He's very clever. Kirsty's asking if you listen to uh, Spotify. Uh, Naomi, do you listen to Spotify? Yeah, I do. Cool. Yeah. There you go. And uh, I know the answer to this one already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you play the guitar, Naomi? No, I don't. Yeah, That's asking. my partner. There you are. I did play bass when I was about 14. Did you? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Not, not very well. <laughs> I, was, I was a professional bass player. For Were you? Years. Yeah. Oh. Um, I was in an accident and lost uh, a joint in this finger. Yeah. I've had it rebuilt twice. Um, yeah, but it gave it made it easier to decide on what I really wanted to do. So Yeah. Yeah. But there's lots of bass players who are illustrators. Dan Is Mumford. That? Yeah, Dan Mumford, you know Dan? Have you seen Dan's work? No. He's a bass player. Um yeah, I know a few a few I illustrators why that who are also is. bass players. Don't I know. Why that is. That's crazy, Don't know. isn't it? <laughs> I've got a Maybe super. It's... Go on, carry Maybe on. it's because it looked like illustrators don't on you usually kind of a little bit more introverted and not like show offs. Mm. <laughs> so like maybe they music, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't want to be front and centre. Mm. And uh, Emma's saying it sounds like we've got a new band straight here. Yeah, I'm I'm leaving our band, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> um the uh uh I'll come back to that question in a minute. Uh, here's a great random for you. Um, mm. Do you like pineapple on pizza? Where are you on pineapple on oh, pizza? Oh, no, 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 I don't. No, I, I'm a bit of a pizza purist. I kind of don't think, you know, the less toppings, the better, really. If it's got a good base and a good sauce, you don't need the toppings. There you go. So, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Robert, so, see, Robert, someone else here uh, on, in our audience, regular uh, tender, yeah. was also, is also a, ba a bass player. Oh, that's um, weird, isn't it? And I was ask, also asking if uh, what band I was in. I was in a few. Um, I did do TV. I did some TV, just so you know. Uh, I was in a few punk bands. Then I was a session player uh, for someone called Adele. Not the Adele you know. Um, <laughs> was it a dream? I, I was at art college at the time and playing for that. So I was earning money by doing that and whatever. So, yeah, no. <laughs> I wasn't too desperately sad, but there you are. Uh, Tim saying I was also an astronaut professional. It's not about me, Tim. <laughs> and, uh, and Ruth is coming up for nose. But anyway, right back to your drawing, Emma. <laughs> Emma, Naomi, I'm talking. I'm seeing stuff in the chat. Naomi, I apologise. <laughs> no, it's quite nice. It's nice to just chat away. It feels it feels like I'm listening to a podcast. <laughs> Getting some band names. The good source. Oh. <laughs> That was what I saw in the corner of my eye. That was what <laughs> uh, Crystal is asking if you're yeah. freelance, which I think I, you are, aren't you? I am freelance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you choose what projects you work on? Oh, it's not always a choice, is it? It's like usually it's kind of like comes in the door. Some work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the moment, yeah, especially. But um, I, I think. Oh, I don't know how I choose work. If it, I think it just you know, and I think 
sometimes you, you make work the, the, you kind of get the jobs that suit the work work you make so mm. if you kind of like your work then it kind of you know it leads to the kinds of jobs you want you know I think I get because I, lo I love drawing people I get a lot of jobs that are kind of I don't know more like people focused and about kind of community or I've just done a, I've just um the cover hasn't been released yet but it's I've just done a book about climate change activists and and I've been cool. really lucky to do some jobs that I just really like the last years my the kind of book jobs that I've done have just suited me so much and I've I've loved it I did a book called um the Atlas of Happiness by a writer called Helen Russell mm. and it was about the 30 happiest countries in the world and I did like 30 maps, map illustrations. Yeah. And yeah, that was so enjoyable because I felt like I was learning loads about, about these countries at the same time. That's the great thing, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah you, you do end up, it, some of it just sticks, doesn't it? As you're going through it and you find yeah. yourself dipping into different areas, which is really, yeah. here we go. But the, um, I mean, you've got an impressive uh, list of uh, of. When I say a list of logos, I'm talking about, of course, the, the big, big clients that yes. you've, yeah. you've worked for. I've got some of those in front of me on another screen here. So yeah. you have worked for Facebook. Yeah. You've worked for the New York Times, Airbnb, Zalanda, Nest, Etsy, The Daily Telegraph, Francis Lincoln Publishing. I'm literally reading the, the entire yeah. list of your website. Um, Octopus, uh, yeah. Wide-Eyed Editions. So you've, you've done a lot. Yeah, I've been, I've been busy. <laughs> you have been busy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a. I feel incredibly lucky. I think it's. I think it's actually, despite having so many resources like stuff like this, that I, you know, on the internet, I think it's it's much harder because there's a bigger, it's more competitors now, isn't there? Because so there's so many good illustrators mm. out there. But um, yeah, I've just been really lucky. I hope it continues. I have that kind of freelance panic all the time of like, what if it just stops? Oh, I think that, <laughs> that's, that's normal, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's quite good in a way because it, it's like, what, what do I really want to do? Every few, you know, when it goes quiet in January or when there's a global pandemic, it's always a good time to kind of to think, what do I really want to do? Mm. And then maybe to stop making that work you know when you have time to make the work just of something that you want to do kind of like create work like the kind of work you want to get so you know if you want to be a children's illustrator then go and make some children's illustrations and kind of push your work in the direction you want it to go in yeah i mean you kind of can create your own pathway like that Ooh. you know just put it out there put it on behance put it on instagram put it yeah uh where, where, wherever it is that, yeah. that you're being noticed and do you have yeah. an agent just out of interest you i don't i did when i um first graduated i got signed up with an agency we were like our course was really brilliant and they really they made it they made sure that you were presenting your work very very professionally in the exhibitions etc mm. and um so we did dnad Yep. Did, uh, design fair yep and uh and then an agent signed me up but they were they they've shut down since since i signed with them and um that makes me sound like i was responsible for them shutting down but um, they they were just quite an old prestigious uh agency but I don't, they didn't really keep up with the kind of um with the way that social media was changing things and they kind of prioritised the wrong sorts of things, I think. Right, yeah. I'm and then they, they shut down, and then since then, I've just been freelance. I, w I would quite I would quite like an agent, but I think it has to be, for the amount of money they take, it has to be a really, a really worthwhile um, move, doesn't it? Yes. I think, it's, it I think it's so important if you're um, trying to make it as a children's book illustrator. It's really important to have an agent, I think, then. But otherwise, I think you can sort of get by as, as, as long as you, you're fairly confident in how to get work. Well, I mean, it's always that trade-off, isn't it, between, yeah. you know, between having to go out and find the stuff yourself and, and, and but allowing somebody to have a slice of the pie to do that for yeah. you and to act actively promote you. But yeah. It's I've only what, ever, I mean, it's ever had one quite... and they were terrible. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear that many great stories, do you? <laughs> 
They're really bad. And I just thought, do you know what? I'll do a better job of doing this yeah, myself. Well, that's, so I'm just going to. Yeah. <laughs> Same and especially, as you. especially with the internet now and you can really reach people if you're, um, if you're creating lots of work and you kind of have patience and build it up, you can really reach people. I mean, I get so many jobs now through Instagram and um, my first kids book that I did was because I did a, like I had um, a one-year-old and I did a little project, just a self, you know, initiated project of making flashcards of all her favorite things. Right. And then that led to, to a book because I just saw it on Instagram and just liked the style of it. So it does work and you, but you just have to be patient. I think it's not going to, you're not going to get the job the next day. It might be a year from now, it might be two years from now. I'm shaping yeah. up nicely. Mm, I love that kind of, I'm really into this really neon red at the moment. It reminds me of, um, you know, when you have like a box of Crayola crayons. Yeah. And when I was little, there was, I always remember there was a color called electric watermelon. <laughs> I think that's I another think, great yeah, band electric, name yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look and see if uh, let's, the chat is very 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 busy again this is great uh, yeah. don't forget by the way people if you are watching this on YouTube you are yeah, that, that's fine by the way but you are possibly missing out on the opportunity to uh, get involved with the community on behance.net slash adobe live where you can come along, you can ask questions uh, and chat with everybody here. There's quite a lot of chat going on, uh, so do uh, think about doing that if you are, if you can do so. So, um, people asking, well, I think we've answered a couple of the questions about what mm -hmm. uh, about finding work. Mm. Um, what was it like to illustrate for clothing? Is <gasps> Oh yeah, that was um, that was cool. That's I'd love to do more of that. Really, um, yeah, it was good. I mean, with the first job I did, I don't know what job they're talking about. I've done a few different ones. Yeah, but the first one I did, I'd already made the illustration. It was for a kids' clothes company, and um, I'd already made the illustration, and they just kind of licensed it out. But, right. Uh, yeah, so, but that was really cool, and and it, because it was for kids' clothing, my daughter like wears the clothes. And, um, and I've even got like a pencil case actually here oh, that they made for me out of the fabric that I did. So Fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice when you get to actually use your illustrations. No, yeah, that's, so I'm really trying cool. to find the question actually so I can find it. It was actually mm. answering the question, but the, the chat is moving so quickly. We do, so uh, Connor's saying we live in a world where you can create your own job. Actually, Connor, I think you're you possibly right uh, there. You can if you can put the time into it and the effort. You possibly can. Would you agree, Naomi? Would you? Yeah, I, yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I think I think yeah, with the internet, it's so so brilliant that you can just reach people, and especially I think a lot of a lot of illustrators are quite shy people. Yes. So, and and in in you know even twenty years ago, you wouldn't have been you know it would have been really difficult to be an illustrator in the UK outside of London, because you would have needed to take your portfolio around, you know, and and show people in person. And so, I think it's really great that it it means that lots of different types of people can be illustrators because they can just do it from their you know like me from my bedroom. I don't have a studio. I just work from home all the time, so this isn't unusual for me. And you don't have to, yeah, you can live wherever you want in the world. I can tell you from experience, <laughs> because yeah. obviously, as I say, still within my use by date, but over 20 yeah. years, the uh, lugging a portfolio around was no fun. Oh, sorry, I've got a dog that's barking in the background. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Suddenly found something that's interesting. Yeah. Is it a he or a she? Is it a, it, it's a he. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember that well. In fact, I have one of my I have my college portfolio oh. just to the side of my desk because we're cleaning out the storage here in the studio. Uh, and mine's right here. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a small one. That was an A2 portfolio. I used to lug an A1 thing around. Yeah. And it felt thankless. Yeah, Sometimes. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like your work, but we have somebody who does that kind of style already. Yeah. Yeah, we're here in, you know, I lived in Nottingham 
uh, initially when I when I first started out. So yeah, it was not easy getting down to London to see people. Mm. Not easy. No, I would I wouldn't have liked that. I only had to take my portfolio once, and that was to go to London to go um, and meet the agency that I signed up with. Mm. I was so nervous, and yeah, and it just it just it kind of didn't suit me. I think, and I think a lot of people would probably feel the same way. I mean, I do I do think it's a bit can be a bit lonely sometimes, especially if you work yeah. at home. But mm. I think that's the to me that's the there's some the occasional instability of, of work and the loneliness are, are the only drawbacks, I think, really. I think it's, um, did it, at the beginning of the lockdown period, did you, like many other illustrators that I know and have spoken to, think, oh. yeah, this isn't much different <laughs> to work? Yeah, no, I saw, I saw a meme that said, when, when you find out that your normal lifestyle is described as quarantine, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. I thought, other than doing the school run, there's not much, not much difference, really. Yeah, true. Uh, Robert is asking, at what point in your education or work did you realise that you had a strong style? Ooh, I, th I think. I mean, I think that I've I've sort of tweaked it over the years. Mm. Um, quite a lot, I think. I think I'm I'm much more comfortable in my style now. And, but then I, I do think that being too comfortable is sometimes a bit of a bad thing and it's quite good to tweak it and keep refining it. Um, but I don't know. That's a really good question though. But it is oh, a good question. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tough I'd one say, too. Isn't it? I'd say the way that I draw like figures isn't that different. I think it's just maybe a bit more polished now. And maybe I think I'm a bit, I'm a lot more confident with colour. I used to use really, really muted palettes, and I think that was a bit of a lack of confidence of really going for it. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. Probably, probably never really comfortable with it, or, or or knowing you have strong style. Probably always think, oh, it could be better. I wish it was more like this or that. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, got some people here are showing uh, they they are not entirely of a dissimilar age to myself. <laughs> in that this is something you would have you would have probably never heard of but Stuart Fickling here is saying uh, about his experiences portfolios everything mounted on uh board which it was used to get yeah. foam board foam x foam core board mount things on foam core board or card you do all this stuff and you'd have uh, the, the thing you've probably never heard of is a spray mount booth Oh, I have. Oh, I have. Because we, have ha we had, yeah, we had to do it <laughs> for for our. Um, I don't know if they still do it. I mean, it's probably not worth it if they do. But on our course, we had to make a portfolio, and we had, and it's a quite, it's a big expense as well, getting everything printed, getting the portfolio, mm -hmm. and then to only use it once <laughs> it was a bit gutting. Oh, it's, it was dreadful stuff, and yeah. in fact, Robert Brock has also said the dreaded spray mount. Yeah. Do, do, do you know when? Uh, when I, when I first started working, that would be a regular thing. You'd have booths that in which you would you would spray stuff to yeah. stick things down. And I started in paste up, which was which was basically doing that all day. But people smoked in offices then. Yeah, you had these particles of this glue floating <laughs> around. Horrible stuff. Horrible. But, but some people do love the stickiness and the smell. Corey does. Yeah. They, yeah, 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 yeah. There's definite things that we used to do at uni that were much more hand. We used to, our um, lecturer was, um, he made artist books. Yeah. So we used to sort of, he encouraged us to make our own sketchbooks. And I do miss having, you know, that being a real important thing, you know, and it was really nice and tactile. I think that's good Ooh. advice that, you know, I, I personally, I like that. If you get yourself a wire binder and make your own, because you can put different papers in, you can put yeah. in, you know, different used, stock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used to, um, like, sort of for, for projects, I would make, use fabric that related to the project, you know. Mm. So if I was doing something about a beach, it would be like deck chair kind of fabric and I make it all really fit together. I used to love doing stuff like that. I, I mean, to be honest, I've only just start getting back into sketchbooking again since lockdown and I've been doing like life drawing classes on zoom and things 
and that's I think great... it's a good thing to keep yeah, up, you know. Yeah, it really definitely. Is. Um, let's have a look what Sandri is saying about her photographic portfolio. She had everything had to be printed 2430 yeah. uh, centimetres. Yeah, it's just, and the people you'd show them to want to keep the print. Crazy. <laughs> photography was a crazy thing then, really expensive. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Oh, Julia's in. My friend Julia Seeger is in. And also, Julia hosts uh, the German live stream twice a week. She is an amazing. Um, illustrator and uh, she spends a lot of time drawing. Hi, Julia. Um, spray mount still a topic of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, and still a discussion. Oh well, but things were more were more uh, time consuming and expensive. The heady smell of alcohol markers. I, I still use alcohol markers. Oh, I, I have a like huge. I've got maybe about 60 over there on the side. Still do it. I like markers. Markers are good. Yeah. Corrine saying that takes her back. Spray Mount Booth. There you go. You, <laughs> you've woken up all the nostalgic oldies. <laughs> vintage. All the vintage. Uh <laughs> Uh, Connor's asking, either of you worked with music, i.e. digital art for music videos or album covers? Oh, well, I have. I've, I've done a few of those. What about you, Naomi? Have you done album-based stuff? No, like no. No, I haven't. Um, I did actually do, I, I don't know if they still do it, the Secret 7-inch competition. No. Where you, you, where you submit designs for, hmm. for bands. And I ended up getting chosen for one of the they were re-releasing i think it was friday i'm in love by the cure so i got mm. a little like copy of it i think it was it signed i have signed. vague recollections of hearing about that you know, yeah sure. i don't know i haven't heard about it in a while I, I, I wonder if they still do it but yeah so that's the closest but no it's something i'd love to do mm. i'm very into music but um, i had one come out on friday actually I only, do t I only do one or two a year. I did yeah. one for um, uh, Iggy and the Crazy Makers in Ooh. California. That came out on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of music was it? Uh, it's easygoing, easygoing music with uh, with some really challenging lyrics. That's all okay. the only way I can describe it. I'm not very good at pigeonholing. Um, it doesn't fall directly into they cover a broad range of styles yeah um doesn't fall directly into any one they you know that some of the stuff they do is kind of funky there's a yeah. rock element in there very fusion let's say fusion just, for, fusion. just for <laughs> fusion. oh chantal's asking about so she draws all the time she'd like to start shifting into a more creative career how do you become an illustrator without schooling, I guess the, what would, what would your advice be there if, for someone who couldn't or for any yeah. reason get from uni, how would they, how would they go about I, it? I think, I think that um, the good thing about uni is, and it's, I guess it's trying to take the good stuff from, from what an education gives you uh, and putting that into your own life. And the thing that really helped was just having time to really put into it and develop your like your they they didn't like saying style at my university so we always said visual language so really really having time to develop that so I think it's like giving yourself time and, and you know really just practicing just drawing loads seeing what interests you what kind of, maybe think firstly think what kind of illustration you'd want to do um and then I guess just go from there really start making keep, it yeah start making mm. it that's you know You've just got a good, just got to start. There's a good saying, isn't there, with writers that don't get it right, get it writ. I wish there was one for illustration because it's really good advice that you don't, it's not always going to be perfect. And I so think not, being... Go on, Karen, sorry. Being a perfectionist, I think it's really damaging for illustrators. I know a lot of people who are so amazing, but never really did anything with it because they were just always trying to get it perfect. Mm. never really going to be perfect it's a state that doesn't really exist is it if no. you think about it it's, and yeah i think you're right that that possibly is damaging to work yeah. um to that extent you know there, there has to be a thing where that's as that's as good as it needs to be yeah at, at and next time. time next time make it better use yeah. use it it's like a lesson 
yeah, learn from it, move on. That's yeah, it's good. Uh, uh, looking at it. a lot, a lot of people miss college. <laughs> <laughs> we all miss college. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. So, so there's so much going on here, which is good. Um, yeah, Jackie's saying, uh, Jackie's talking to Chantal, saying, do lots of drawing, watch lots of tutorials, share your work. Uh, Lindsay uh, is saying, hi, Tony and Naomi. I'm actually a videographer, but just enjoying much the shop talk, which is really, really good. <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say to you. It's about a friend of mine, um, Julian Calverly, is a photographer of some yeah. some note. And uh, he uh, isn't, isn't your other half photographer as well? Yeah, he's a wedding photographer. Right. Yeah. But um, the uh, Julian's always being asked, "How can I take better pictures?" Yeah, you know, or "Oh, you take lovely pictures. You must have an awesome camera," which is probably the most infuriating thing to say to a photographer. Yeah. Um, but so, when they ask Julian, "How can I get better at taking pictures?" Well, let's take more pictures. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's the same with illustration. Make more yeah. illustrations. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, Kirsty's asking if I do illustrations. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do. Oh, here's a now here's a tricky one for you. Uh, mm. Naomi, how do you charge for your work? Oh, that's yeah, that's I, I could probably a... <laughs> I could probably do with some advice on that. Yeah, yeah, I struggle with the kind of quoting too high and not getting the job, or quoting too low, and then they say yes straight away, and you're like, I quoted too low. Mm. I should have asked for more. But um, I think it really it's something that I still struggle with. I wish that clients would just tell you how much they wanted to spend and then you could say, yes, that's fair, or no, it's not. Because often you'll get, you'll say, What's, what budget do you have? I always, I always say that in case they do have a budget in mind. And, um, but often they'll say, oh, we don't, we don't have any mind, a, a, one in mind. And you'll give them a quote and they say, oh, that's not in our budget. So you're like, well, you did have a budget then. <laughs> yes, yes. It's that tricky. It is a good tactic, though, yeah. I think, to throw, throw, the, uh, throw the, the metaphorical ball yeah, uh, yeah. in their direction in the first place. Yeah, it is and always I, hard. Yeah, it is hard. And, and good, decent companies usually have, they do have a budget in mind and they, mm. they have something to offer you. But um, there's there's lots of information. I don't know if the, the AOI still give information. They do, yeah. Yeah, they do. yeah. Yep, still a like, member. Are you a member? I'm not a member, no. I, I think I will become one because it's good for advice, isn't it? It is very good but, for um, advice, yeah. But they it, it, have lots of, yeah. of good information, yeah. A guideline yeah. for it. It depends on the job, really, doesn't it? It depends on how long it's going to take you. It's and the then legal it, support, which I think is the best thing. Yes, yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 yeah. Well, no. But, Actually, being involved in that community is the best thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, you yeah. know, the legal support doesn't hurt. So, no, I think that's a good organisation to, yeah. to be part of. Um, Caroline is asking, she's noticed some embroidery on your website. How did that come about? Was it for a client? Oh, was yeah, that, that was for a client. That was um, a French clothing company called Olo. Mm -hmm. They're like a sustainable French um, clothing brand. And they just saw some of my illustrations and they licensed them out. But yeah, it's really nice. They sent a little cap with it on. And my daughter wears that as her son hat. It's really sweet. Little cap with like a little marigold on it. Nice. Mm. Nice. Julia's saying um, perfectionism is fear in a mink coat. Oh, that's a good saying. That a good that's saying. very She's great good. With like that. Yeah, I like that very much. Um, Stuart's asking, do clients change any of your illustrations or are they always happy? Uh, sometimes, well, oh yeah, they probably do. Well, they ask me to change them. There's mm. the odd occasion where you see that they've to change them and that's not great. Um, but yeah, it's the nature of it. If you're going to do it full time, you're not always going to be really happy with the changes. But, um, I think you've got to kind of learn how to voice your opinion respectfully and not have a strop about it. But if, you, if somebody, <laughs> if they're paying and, you know, then you kind of have to suck it up a little bit sometimes. And then if what I do do is work like that, I just don't put it on my website if I'm not happy with it. I only put the the work, you know, there's temptation to just throw everything on your website. But it's good to be really selective once you've got a few different clients or a few different projects to be quite selective of what you put on. And mm. be wary that whatever you put on, 
that your people are going to think, well, that's what you do. I want more of that, you know. Yeah, I want you to recycle something that you've done previously. That's but happened quite around. a lot. Yeah, 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 that's and that's quite frustrating. I I did a, an illustration with a, a pathway, and there's lots of people, lots of different things going along, you know, going on along the pathway. And then for months, that was all people wanted me to do mm. um, was these pathway illustrations because it's a very convenient way of, of involving, you know, if you've got a big, heavy bit of text with lots of different things, it's quite a good way to involve lots of things. So you've just kind of got to say, no, I'm not doing that anymore and not put it on your website. Mm. No, always tricky. I used yeah. to dread input from the marketing or account teams. Oh, That's yeah. Was, you know, oh. Like, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 bigger, the bigger the team you're working for, the harder it is. And the more mm. corporate it is, the harder it'll be. And I, I struggle with, because I, I love colour so much, and I'm really kind of a bit obsessed with colour, um, that, that I find it hard when, you, you know, you have to do something with brand colours. And if you don't like the brand colours, you're like, oh. This looks yeah, it is, it, is, it, is, it is tricky. <laughs> it is. Um, Karine's asking, as a designer and illustrator without a particular style myself, mm. do you ever want to change or explore new styles or would you worry about losing work from faithful followers and clients? Uh, I think it's good to change it, but change it really subtly over time. Maybe just tweak it. Or, I mean, I, I, I don't actually know anyone who does this, but some people just work under a different name in a different style. If you, if you want to, to do different styles, then I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's quite a good option to do a different, under a different name. Yeah, but, I've done um, that. Yeah. I've done that too, yeah. 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 I think I'd find it, I'd find it difficult. I don't think... I really love at the moment getting back into painting and doing more kind of gouache watercolory things, but I don't know if that would I would actually try and do that professionally, or if it's just for fun. But um, but yeah, I think I'd find it quite difficult to sort of almost like putting on different hats, isn't it? Yeah. But um, but then if you had slightly different styles, I think that would be okay, and you could just. If you've got a job, then you just say to the client, what, what, which pieces of mine have you seen that you liked? So then you'll mm. know what kind of style they're after, which they tend to do anyway. In a brief, they'll show you what, what, what pieces they like to give you a better idea. Yeah. It's a little bit scrappy. You tidy it up. That's good. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, Yasunuri is saying, sorry, I don't, oh, so Yasunuri is talking in the, in the chat saying, uh, he does not converse very much because his English is uh, almost non-existent. And it's Google who helps me to translate. Uh, I hear you. I'm learning German uh, at the moment. I watch the German streams. So I do that as well, sometimes to hilarious effect. But <laughs> it's fine. The main thing is, Asunari, is that you're here. So welcome. And I'm glad you're uh, taking part. Um, let's have a look. Uh, yeah. Oh, plenty of stuff going on. Yeah, uh, again, people uh, identifying with the thing from uh, from clients. Yeah. Oh, and can you just change this bit? And can you yeah. just yeah? Or oh, that color. Um, yeah. Could you make that more so and so? And then uh -huh. yeah, but well, I can do that. But everything else will look kind of strange if you go yeah. that far with it. And there's yeah, like, yeah. Well, I want it that way. So yeah. <laughs> okay then <laughs> that's it you know and it's it, you've got to try not to be a diva about it yeah but it's hard when when you when you're like oh i much prefer it this way i have i i, I mean i'm not very good at standing up for myself with stuff like that but i did this past year i won't name the client but i did stand up because they changed they completely changed the colors around and I just i i wouldn't have been happy you know it, it was going to have my name on it and be promoted mm. So I was just really not happy. So I did, you know, diplomatically say, look, like, if it, can't, can't we find a compromise and we can go halfway between that and, and what I did? So, yeah, you've got to try and be sort of respectful, haven't you? You don't want to upset anyone too much. I know it's tricky. That I, I, I don't know. I'm not very good at handling things like that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'm not, I tend to be slightly less diplomatic. Oh, well, I'll but... probably go and have a massive rant about it to my partner, you know, or whoever's closest and then gather my, you know, compose myself and write a more polite email. <laughs> You've got to let it out somehow. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Sean also watches the German stream, uh, also to learn German, and he lives in Germany. There you go, Sean. Fantastic. Ooh. In fact, I recognise you from uh, the German stream, or your name, anyway. So there you go. Uh, here's a question for you. Yeah. What resolution and canvas size do you Ooh. work to? Do you do you work to a specific size, or is it uh, per job? I, oh, it depends. It depends per job, or if it's for print, or just for the web. Hmm. Um. With this one, I'm working in a square because I might make it into a pattern. So to sort of tile it. Yeah. Um, which it is, I enjoy doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just depends. Depends. You know, usually if it if you're doing a job for a client, they'll have a size in mind. So, yeah, it usually depends on that. Yeah. I think when I'm working on my own prints for my Etsy shop, then I usually just go A4, A3, yeah. yeah, I work at 300 DPI. I'm worried when the people are asking me technical questions that I'm going to say, I work at 300 DPI, and they're going to go, really? <laughs> 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 no, I don't think you'll get any of that here. I yeah. mean, so many people just... <laughs> no, people sound very nice. Yes, and, and so many people work mainly you know purely digital in yeah. a lot of places. I mean, it's, it's still a good print's on the way back, you know. Well, in fact, print never disappeared, but... Print is is yeah. on the rise uh, hugely, actually. Uh, like that. So Julia is saying uh, this is quite funny, actually. My friend Julia uh, is saying there was a thread on the internet if designers were gardeners. Uh, it's hilarious what your clients would say. Mm, I like that tree you planted, but can you make it rounder instead of triangular? <laughs> <laughs> Which is Ooh, good. Too far. Uh, Stuart's asking what tablet you're using. It's an iPad Pro, isn't it? You're yes, using, it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Tim's chipping in with the gardening thing, saying, could you move the tree five centimetres to the <laughs> left? <laughs> oh, man, I used to hate, like, that was something, yeah. You must have come across that where people say, oh, yeah, I like that, and I like where it is, but could you just move it a bit to the left? And yeah. then you, you do that, you send them, send them it back, and they go, oh no yeah, yeah no well actually i think i might have meant to the right put it a yeah. bit further away yeah and you do that and they go oh, oh no, no actually put it back where it was in the <laughs> yeah. first place go, ah! <laughs> yeah no i've had that i think that usually art directors are, are, are good to work for because they they're you know they do it for a job i think yeah. it gets difficult when you're like working for somebody who's like never really done that or and they don't really understand that, that constantly changing your mind is work for you yeah, that's so the thing, I'm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I say to clients now, I say that I'll do the rough drawing and I'll do loads of those if you're not happy. I'll do like as many rough drawings pretty much as you want because they don't take that long. But once we're agreed on the drawing, then after that, kind of, I'll make one round of changes. And after that, mm. then you're going to have to, I'm going to have to charge for it because like you said, you know, it's not, it's not always as easy as cha just change that one color and it's like, well, then that affects the whole palette overall mm. or you know so i think it's good to be like kind of firm but fair about it just how do you go about your presentations to your clients how do you present the work is it email or do you I just email yeah. yeah yeah just email sometimes if it's a bigger piece after we've agreed on the rough sometimes i might you know send them a a little crop of what i'm you know a small area so they can see the colors mm. and just see just so that before I go hot the whole, do the whole hog, you know, then they can, they like it and any little kind of changes could be made early on. Yeah, that's the best, best way. I've got to tell you, there are some funny things on this whole design, <laughs> design it for designers or gardeners. Um, yeah, like, uh, I like this hedge. Can you make me a bonsai version of this? <laughs> I don't like that rose colour. Can you make it yellow? Yeah. I like the flowers in the garden of my neighbour. Can you plant them in my garden, but in a different colour? <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of these things. It's very funny. But uh, I think what you were saying about art directors is very true, because most art directors, or in fact, I've never met one who hasn't 
um, works their way into the job from doing something else so they can at least identify and empathize yeah with you and you can have yeah. a you can have a conversation in which they would understand completely yes. if you said well you know and, and you can negotiate in that way but it's when yeah. you're working with the with some people in in things like marketing team accounts teams and yeah and, and that's, depending on smaller yeah. companies yeah tricky. i think i love i love working in um with publish like in publishing because you know it's difficult to get into publishing so the people mm. that you're working with are really really good at their jobs they know you know they kind of they, they can push you in the right direction and yeah they tend to be really great and you do find them more sort of if it's a prestigious thing maybe not necessarily making loads of money from it but if it's a prestigious thing like working with the new york times they were very very good at their jobs they knew mm. what what how to push you in the right direction they wouldn't tell you what to do exactly, but they'd say, this isn't right. It needs to be, you know, just kind of gently pushing. And that I really, it was hard, but I really, like, really appreciated it. Mm. I like Let's it. see how it... I don't love it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the voice of the hovering art director. <laughs> uh, just there. Mine's right here, Tim. So let, let's crank it. Let's see what the uh, hovering art director's input is. We're just about just four or five minutes. Me. I'm an artist. <laughs> the 90s calls and they want their job shadows back <laughs> do love that so get so much joy out of that action figure so funny <laughs> yeah we've just got about uh about three or four minutes uh, okay left of natural time now um no but of course there's no rush so if you yeah, need to go well, over a little bit we are cool with that well um wh whatever happens i'll finish the illustration i'll pop it up on my instagram cool that's excellent. And for our uh, audience here, don't forget, we are here every day between 12 and 1 uh, in the UK, behance.net slash Adobe Live, where you can get involved, see different inspirations every day, different things to talk about, discover, um, plenty to do here. And of course, also, of course, to be uh, involved with the community and to chat here, discuss things, ask questions, all of that, all good stuff. Um, tomorrow, uh, we have Rachel Miller, um, joining us, I believe. Uh, so she's a sign writer, a gilder and lettering artist. So that should be really, really interesting uh, as well. We've had some great, great guests on here that Rufus and Emma um, uh, have found for us. Um, so that, that's fantastic. It's been lovely having you along today as well. Yeah, really, it's really been nice really nice. Time. Yeah, it make, it's nice to, to talk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm the same. This is who I talk to every day. Yeah, yeah. I need an action figure. Well, I've got my dog. I can talk to my dog, but yeah. I do go and work in the house sometimes. I've got three dogs. So I do go and work have in the you? house sometimes. To, what, to... what kind of dogs have you got? I've got two labs, uh, oh. a black lab and a yellow lab. And we've got a dachshund as well. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And two cats and a rabbit. Oh, Wow. And if my wife had her way, we'd have a farm. She actually wants me to buy a farm. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wants oh. to keep donkeys and pigs. <gasps> and donkeys are my favourite animal. Oh, she loves, loves I love donkeys. love donkeys, yeah. They're just like big dogs, aren't they? Mmm. Yeah, Jackson for the win. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, she, do you know the company Sticker Mule uh, mm. that makes stickers? There's a company, Sticker Mule. And their mascot is a donkey. Yeah. And um, when I get quite a lot of stuff here, quite a lot of stickers sent through. And whenever they whenever they arrive, they have a couple of donkey stickers in there. Yeah. I just, I just go and stick them on the back of Sharon's iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart's saying they get lonely and need two. Oh, I know that, uh, Stuart. That's why if we wouldn't have a donkey if we were going to have them. We would definitely have two. Yeah. But did you also know that donkeys can live to be 50? Whoa. Yeah. Now take a look. Do you think I'm going to? <laughs> I'm, su I'm suggesting possibly not, and I don't want yeah. something being emotionally attached. <laughs> oh. No. So what I did was, you know, the donkey sanctuary. Yes. What the one yeah. in Dorset? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they kind of operate nationally, but yeah, in Dorset. Yeah. yeah. So I've got I got Sharon an elevated membership oh. of, uh, of the donkey sanctuary, so she can go visit whenever she wants. Oh, it's lovely. There, it's really nice. Oh, and Rising really enjoyed a lovely Monday lunchtime, which is Aww. nice. 
There we are. And Richard's just in for a walk and happy to see that it's Photoshop, not Illustrator, because it's got a softer feel. Ooh. There you are. See, I can say that. That's a good reason to say, isn't it? That's a better Cheers. reason than my rambling about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I say it's got a softer feel. There you are. Well, we are just about at yeah. time uh, now. So yeah. uh, shall we have a look at, at where you yeah. are? Will it she get a view? There we go. Oh, let me it's reset looking it. Lovely already. It's a bit wonky. Get rid of the colour palette. Oh, and I'll show you my last little thing that I like to do. Yeah. On top of my illustrations, sometimes I add texture with different brushes. Yeah. I'll just quickly show you the brush. So I like this one, the Kyle's brushes. Yep. And I like to add noise to give it that kind of papery. I love kind of the mm. way they're printed, like screen prints and rice is it riso or risograph Risogra risograph. risograph yeah i love yeah. the look of that yeah. so i like to add a bit of texture like that mm. and this is something i've been doing since i graduated and it's the same bit of texture that i put on top so if it was normal at full opacity it looks like it's just like the back of a sketchbook so i just turn go on to hard light and just take it down just it softens everything and then i might oh, even nice. put another one on vivid and then it just really softens everything mm, so if you zoom in you can see it adds a bit of nice texture that's not too it doesn't you know just not distracting mm. so yeah no, it's I'll, lovely. Fi I'll finish it and put it on my instagram it's cool carl by the way has got some new brushes out at the moment he's yeah. got the spring, spring 2020 collection really cool. nice. Oh yeah mm. i love all of those brushes they really when i found those it made such a big difference mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, though, for now, though, Naomi, thank you so much yeah. uh, for joining us today, sharing some of your work, your thoughts and everything. It's been really yeah. lovely having you on. Yeah. Um, to everybody, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for the jokes and all of the good stuff mm -hmm. in there, which is really nice. So glad you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, join us here every day, every weekday between 12 and 1 here on Behance.net slash Adobe Live for much more of this as we go on. So there we are. Thanks ever so much. Uh, cheerio, Naomi. Lovely spending yes. time with you. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.